Okay, so we're just going to start with um, turning a light on for two seconds, then turning the light off, then waiting two seconds, and then ending the program. Remember that flow charting is just a way um, to break down a process, and this seems very simple, but part of what we want to do is we want to develop expertise for s solving larger problems, okay? So remember all our flow charts start with the start icon, right? You have to have a start, but you don't have to have an end, although lots of programs will have an end or a start. All right, so we start with our start, right? And we have to tell it every step we want to do. So we want to turn a light on. Okay, so we're going to say light on, right? And then we want that light to stay on for two seconds. So we really just need a wait or a timer, right? Right, then we're gonna, we wanna turn the light off. Okay, then the next thing we wanna do is we wanna wait another two seconds. So, Gonna bring our process flow up and into the wait, right? And then once that's done, we want to end the program. And so this is our stop, right? This is pretty easy. No problems. All makes sense. Remember, you have to tell it every step. You don't want to skip one, all right? But so now let's make that same problem just a little more difficult. So we want to do the same program light on, wait two seconds, light off, wait two seconds, okay? But now we want to do it for three cycles and then end the program. So how would this look different? We got to have some way of keeping track which cycle we're on, right? So if we need to keep track of a cycle, we're going to need to add a counter. And I recommend that when you use a counter, you name it something that means something to you. Um, obviously, if we're only using one, we can call it something simple like a counter. All right, so let's go back and look at what this would look like. So same deal, program's going to start with start, right? Okay, and then we know we're going to need to keep track and I can kind of do that at the beginning or the end. Um, so I've got to have some kind of counter. I like to put my counters at the beginning, right? At least initialize them. So I'm going to say counter equals one. Okay. And that starts my first cycle. This is a good programming habit too. It's in programming, we would call it initializing your variables, but this is a good programming habit to get into, right? And so we wanna do the same process now. So we wanna do light on, then we wanna wait two seconds, then we wanna do light off, Okay, and then we wanted to wait another two seconds. Okay, and now I need to keep track and make a decision, okay? Have I run this three cycles yet or do I need to keep going? Okay, and I'm gonna just add some little arrowheads here so you can tell which way that's going, All right? So I need a decision box. And remember that a decision box is this kind of diamond shape and we always ask a yes, no question, All right? So I can't ask it, how many cycles have I run? That's not a yes, no question, All right? So I need a yes, no question. 
and I'm gonna say if I run it three times, okay, right? I'm gonna say is the counter equal to three. I haven't made any way to increment the counter yet, okay? So actually, I don't think this is a good. This isn't the most logical place to do this, okay? There are always a lot of ways to do this, but the way we could do this here is we could say, we could either do the decision block or we could increment the counter here. So you can choose whichever way you wanna do. I think I am gonna go back to the decision box, okay? So I'm gonna put my decision box here and say, all right, is counter, and what's the question there? Is it equal to three? Is it greater than three? Is it greater than or equal to three? Okay, well, let's think about it. So one of these has to be a yes and one of them has to be a no, all right? If it's a no, we know that we haven't run it enough times and we need to say counter equals counter plus one. and we wanna repeat the cycle. So when we repeat that cycle, we would run that down. We wanna jump over this, so make that little hump so you can tell, right? They don't wanna go up above counter equals one, that starts me over, right? All right, and so I know I've got to go back to my decision there, but I'm gonna say counter equals counter plus one, all right? So now the counter's two, I run back and run it back three, all right? So this time the counter is two, right? So would I say, is it equal to three? Right, because after it goes through the third time, it is gonna be. So I'd say, is it equal to three here? This is my question, all right? So now I'm going through again, counter is gonna be equal to counter plus one, so it's three. And turn the light on, I'm gonna wait two seconds. I'm gonna turn the light off, I'm gonna wait two seconds. All right, this time counter is equal to three, yes. And then what I want it to do is end the program. Or that's our stop, okay? So I hope that helps you. Let's look at it how we could have done that a different way maybe, all right? So if we had done it the other way where the decision block hadn't been there first, if I just started with start, counter equals one, then light on. Then wait two seconds. Right, then light off. Then another wait two seconds, right? Okay. Now, this time, I still, the last time, remember, I decided to do my decision block first. Now I could increment my counter first this time. There's no right or wrong way. You just have to pick the way you want to do it, all right? So I could do Okay, so my cycle has only run one time now. My counter's already changed to two because I haven't put my decision block in yet. So is counter, and we gotta ask it some yes or no question, all right? We'll label this branch yes and this branch no, all right? So well, let's figure out what the that question is because the question varies based on how our program's laid out. So the last time it was, is counter equal to three? But see, we incremented down here. All right, so it was one here. Now it's changed to two. We've only run one cycle. 
So if it's no again, I still need to go out of here. I'm just gonna show you that. So remember that I wanna come in below counter equals one, but I wanna complete that whole cycle again. Okay, so I need to do it above there. No, all right, now I'm gonna come back through. It's running the second time and the counter is equal to three. All right, so I need it to run again. No, goes back through, blah, 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 blah. Now it's running the third time. The counter is equal to four. All right, so this time I could either ask, I could ask, is the counter greater than three? No, loop back, yes, stop. What question could I have asked instead of is counter greater than three? I could have also asked um, is counter equal to four? I could not, that one's good, right? I could not ask is counter greater than or equal to three? That one doesn't work for me, so I can't do that one because when it was equal to three, it wasn't done yet. I needed it to get to four because of the location. And there's still more variations we could do to this. So I hope this helps you a little bit. And in understanding, um, writing a flowchart, creating an algorithm, and then adding a counter to it.